Johann and Ross created an argument that's supposed to show that the universe is not naturally eternal. And what I mean by naturally eternal is that Ross actually believes the universe is eternal, but not eternal in time. And that it exists as an eternal platonic form in its panentheistic, mathematical, quantum computer, wave function of the universe, God. The first problem with his argument is that premise one is rather conflictive. Ross defines S equals A4 to mean, quote, S is the total entropy of the system, which is directly proportional to the total quantum information in that system. A is the surface area of the region of space produced by that quantum information, unquote. He goes on to say that, quote, so with S equal A4, we see that the amount of space produced is equal to four times the amount of entropy present, unquote. But this is seemingly in conflict with other definitions of what S equal A4 means. For example, Arun Dade Dasgupta defines S equal A4 as entropy is equal to area of the horizon divided by four Planck lengths squared. Another definition is that entropy is equal to the area divided by four times Newton's constant. And Paola Zizi defines S equal A4 as S is the entropy of a region of space of volume V and A is the area in Planck units of the surface bounding V. Ross's definition seems to be in severe conflict with the others since he mentions quantum information and talks about space being produced. That makes his first premise very problematic and can arguably be written off as Ross misrepresenting what S equal A4 means or that we have a case of non-cognitivism with the definition. Another serious problem with premise one is that it is irrelevant to proving the universe began to exist. The holographic principle in S equal A4 has nothing to do with showing the universe is not eternal. It's basically just an equivalence principle and sets an entropic bound. The third premise is fine, the fourth premise is fine, and the fifth premise is fine. The argument fails at premise two. The first fatal problem with premise two is that it commits the fallacy of amphiboly. When Roth says that entropy decreases constantly as we go backwards in time, the premise becomes invalid due to a fallacy of ambiguity since the word decrease can mean two things there. It can mean entropy is decreasing in quantitative amount or that the state of disorder is decreasing and order is increasing. Premise 2 also fails because it commits a second fallacy of amphiboly since it's ambiguous about what type of entropy it is referring to. Is Ross referring to thermodynamic entropy, Shannon entropy, or both? Since there is no clear distinction there, the premise is no good. Because premise 2 is false, Ross's first conclusion is false, since it depends on premise 2. His first conclusion is also false because Ross's premise 2 does not take the quantum regime into account. The way Ross frames his argument, he is assuming an asymmetric arrow of time, and thus when he reverses the arrow of time backwards, he's assuming that at some point, entropy would disappear because it's finite, so it has to disappear and be no more because of finitude. But this does not take into account that the quantum regime does not have a strict and irreversible forward arrow of time, but rather has indeterminate time symmetric temporality that can be created, destroyed, and reset with each quantum fluctuation. He also wrongly assumes covertly that just because something is finite, it has to have a beginning. This is not true. For example, reality is finite, but reality never had a beginning. Thus, neither premise 2 nor premise 3 supports conclusion 1, and the whole argument is subsequently defeated. Rotz also offers no science that proves why and how entropy stops being produced at the quantum level, because his argument covertly does not take the quantum regime into account. It is really only addressing the macroscopic regime, and fallaciously at that, because of the fallacies of amphiboly, which is another fatal error of his argument.